بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our wicked sins from our wicked deeds from ourselves and our wicked deeds and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for the many wicked sins that we commit Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen Ayuha, ayuha al muhabba ayuha al ahabba I want to talk to you about something very, very important. And this is the most beloved speech to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that which is beloved to Allah, we should race towards. Whenever we find something which is clear from the Quran, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or it's clear from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever we find those things which indicates that it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, then we should strive our best to do so. And strive our best to uh, be engaged in that activity or that dhikr, that remembrance of Allah. And the most beloved kalam, beloved speech or statement or phrase to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it was mentioned in an authentic hadith, in uh, a hadith of a uh, Muslim, is, as is mentioned, and it's a hadith of Abi Dhar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. An Abi Dhar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala ukhbiruka bi ahabba al-kalami ila Allah, inna ahabba al-kalami ila Allah, subhanallah wa bahamdihi, ruahu muslim. In this hadith, in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, he asked Abi Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, should I inform you of the most beloved speech to Allah? So the Prophet ﷺ posed this beautiful question, والسلام, in order to spread knowledge, in order to, to encourage the Sahaba عنهم, to be thinking and to seek knowledge, to seek ilm, nothing greater than seeking ilm. And I've always got to put that in there because that's the path to Jannah, one of the paths to Jannah. So the Prophet ﷺ stimulated their intellect by saying, should I not tell you about the most beloved speech to Allah? And then he said, Inna ahabba kalami il Allah. Verily, the most beloved speech to Allah, Subhanallah wa bahamdihi. He said, saying this dhikr, the most beloved speech to Allah is saying glorified be Allah and all praises to Him. So by glorifying Allah and by praising Allah with this very simple phrase that all of us can do, Subhanallah wa, subhanallah wa bahamdihi. And in many other narrations, Subhanallah wa bahamdihi, Subhanallah azim. Saying that is beloved to Allah. It's one of the most beloved statements that you can make. So I want to encourage myself, encourage you as well, to say this often, to make this dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah wa bahamdi, subhanallah al -adhim. Glorify your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Praise your Lord to wa ta'ala. Asking Him. And I want to make another point here that's very important for us to remember. And first I'm reminding myself, and then I'm reminding you. Usikum wa nafsi wa taqullah I advise myself and you, or then you, to taqullah to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to make dhikr often. And that in fact, as the Prophet said, this dunya is nothing. It's mil'oon. 
It's cursed. The dunya is cursed. Everything you strive for. No, nam. We want to get this. We want to accumulate items. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive to do good. Strive to do righteousness. Strive to educate ourselves. Strive to do. But don't let that dunya be your, your goal. And the Prophet ﷺ said that all those things are cursed. Except the remembrance of Allah. So the only thing that is not cursed is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything that helps you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls under that. That it's going to help you. And what is the greatest thing to help you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often? And to make you conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, is reading the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading the kalam of Allah, reading the Quran. Prayer, kathar to salat, and dua, supplication. And also seeking Islamic knowledge. There's no doubt it's beautiful to get educate, educated and be an engineer. This is great, we need engineers. And to get educated and be a doctor, we need doctors. And to be educated and be educated in all these various sciences and, 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 and things that we might need, uh, counselors and uh, social workers and stuff like that, that we need as community, community, as a community and educators. We need this. But greater than all of that by far, that there's no com comparison, is ilm al nafi as the ulama say. And that is knowledge of the sharia, beneficial knowledge. Ilm, which is knowledge, and nafi. Nafi means benefit or beneficial. So, ilm al nafi means beneficial knowledge. And beneficial knowledge as defined by the ulama, they define it as knowledge of Islam. Knowledge of the kalam, kalam Allah, wa kalam al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the actions and af'al al-Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning to learn the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those sciences related to that. That's the best thing. And that's going to help you make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's going to help you remember Allah tabarak wa ta'ala often. The more you seek Islamic knowledge, if it's affecting the heart. But if you're just memorizing with little practice and little implementation, then perhaps your heart can be dead and you could have memorized a lot. But if you're tr attempting to practice and it's making some effect on your character, that's going to help you remember Allah. It's going to help you come closer to Allah. And that's the goal. That's the goal of Talib al-Ilm. That's the goal of seeking knowledge, Islamic knowledge, is to remember Allah. So that you will have statements like that, the most beloved statement to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah wa bahamdi, that you have that on your tongue often. You're glorifying your Lord. And you're praising your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is worthy of all the praise, who created you and I, who gave us another beautiful day, who led us to see another uh, a time above the ground. To do good, to remind each other, to do righteous actions. And there's nothing greater than that. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm al nafi ruskan taybum, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to remember him often. Subhanallah wa bahamdi, subhanallah al-adheem, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.